Welcome to the final stage of the 2022 Dakar Rally. I'm Parker Kligerman joining you on this adventure. After two weeks, 4,600 miles traveled and 11 stages of racing, it all comes down to today. By day's end, the champions will be crowned and those athletes will fulfill their dream of Dakar glory. Nothing is set in stone. There are still battles to be had and the competitors will need to push the finish if they want to win. If not, they'll be left in the dust. The two closest battles are in the side-by-sides and bikes. American Austin Jones sits second in trails by a minute and 41 seconds. He lost the lead yesterday after his four-wheel drive broke and was left spinning his tires in the sand. He does have a plan on how to win and said this yesterday after the stage. The game plan for tomorrow is strip the car down uh, and no spares, no nothing, uh, like no tools and really just absolutely send it as hard as I can. We'll see what we can do and yeah, I'd, I'd rather go home with a win than really anything. On to the 12th and final stage of Dakar 2022. Even if it's short, it's by no means a walk in the park. Some really tricky navigation on the menu. Adrian Van Beveren was also undone by navigation issues yesterday, dropping from top spot down to fourth overall. Bitter disappointment for the Frenchman, but he chose to look on the bright side. It's his first actual finish since 2017, in the same position no less, and he's shown that he's back to his best. If Van Beveren can put the pieces of the puzzle together, he has what it takes to win the Dakar. Matthias Wagner won the Dakar in 2018. This year, the world champion had to settle for third. That's his fourth podium finish in the past six editions. The Austrian admitted that the last month hasn't been easy getting things prepped for Saudi Arabia, but he praised his team, KTM, and his amazing new bike. Now he'll be switching his focus to defending that world title. Don't tell me get excited. I don't know. Pablo Quintanilla began the day nearly seven minutes down on Sunderland and he really went for it, but he was only able to make up around half of the deficit. He finishes as the runner-up in the bikes for the second time after 2020 and he said he was super happy to secure that result for his new team. The Quintanilla Express powering to the stage 12 win. He has had some start to life with Honda. But nobody was able to topple Sunderland, who spent over half of this rally at the summit of the standings. And he was still there when the dust settled on this final stage, even if he said that his stress levels were through the roof due to the tricky navigation. 2017 with KTM, 2022 with Gas Gas. He becomes the 11th biker to win the Dakar on more than one occasion. Well, honestly, this last stage was so difficult and so much stress. Um, a lot of navigation, a lot of tricky notes, uh, a few times a bit confusing and not sure if I was going the right way and oh, honestly my head can explode but what, what a feeling, you know. Well this was the lineup on the final day, Quintanilla with the win and a fantastic effort from rookie Diego Llanos to finish inside the top 10. Sunderland took the crown by 3 minutes and 27 seconds. That's the tightest margin of victory in the bikes in the 21st century. Wow, dream come true. Well, Sunderland had a tough 2021, a crash in Kazakhstan, illness in Morocco, but he starts 2022 on top of the world. Honestly, he brings a little bit of emotion, but yeah, he's a lot of a lot of work <clears throat> all the all the year from from everybody, you know, my my friends, my family, my team. I had a pretty rough season in the World Championship, and um, all of these all of these moments along the way, and the, the harder times that you have, it, it just makes the what feeling more boys, great. Is is all worth it when when you take the victory, you know? Sam Sunderland captures his second Dakar title and his first with Gas Gas. Pablo Quintanilla gave it everything he had and finished just over three minutes back after covering over 5,000 miles. Yuan Bang Bang Breda finished fifth. The 38-year-old was riding with a broken collarbone for majority of the rally. 
three Americans finished in the top 10, led by Ricky Brabeck, who was 35th overall after stage one, just an amazing climb. And Mason Klein takes home honors as the top rookie and top privateer. What a performance. The final stage for the cars brings us our final classifications across all categories. The Toyota Auto Body team have been the winners of the T2 production car class for the last eight years. And last year's winner for the team, Akira Miura, has repeated this success. This is the Japanese driver's third class win and fifth consecutive podium, leaning again on the experience of French co-driver Laurent Lickleuchter. 31st overall and highest place rookie is Po Chan, driving the distinctive looking SMG prepped buggy under the Hanway Motorsport banner. Paired with co-driver Shang Yi Du, less than half his age, the Chinese duo drove brilliantly on their first ever Dakar. Yazid Al Raji has been promising his fans a podium and this year on home soil the Saudi driver has delivered. With long-term stage rallying co-driver Michael Orr alongside him, Al Raji's eighth Dakar started strong and once the Toyota crew hit third overall, it was a case of bringing the car home safely for the second week. Mission accomplished, a Saudi on the podium in Saudi Arabia. Sebastian Loeb continues to be the quickest of the drivers out there on pure pace, and this evolution of the ProDrive Hunter clearly suits him. But even today, a slight navigation error tells the story of what could have been. Nonetheless, it's a Dakar finish, and second place matches his best Dakar result. David Richards, the boss of ProDrive, is clearly pleased. But really, there was no stopping this Toyota. The formidable pairing of Nasser Alatia and Mathieu Bermel in the cockpit with the regulations tweaked for 2022 to address a perceived imbalance of performance. All of those things have steered this newly built GR DKR Hilux over 12 stages and led the rally since day one. Winning in the Middle East has been elusive to the Qatari since the rally came to Saudi Arabia, but finally, 2022 has delivered a fourth win for Alatia on the 44th Dakar rally, which adds to wins for Volkswagen in 2011, Mini in 2015, and 2019 with Toyota. It was amazing uh, Dakar for us and uh, last win it was 2019 and uh, yeah we are quite happy you know with the new regulation and uh, uh, with the new T1 plus and uh, uh, three different uh, teams uh, strong uh, it's possible anyone can win here you know the uh, Tegazu racing you know it was really uh, doing a great job you know to build this car in one year and uh, to come here in uh, Saudi Arabia and Dakar uh, to win this race it was not easy yeah! from day one we make a gap and uh, after you know until the rest day we have a really big gap and then Last week of Dakar, we control and we lose uh, a few minutes, you know, from the second place, from Saab. But OK, I'm really quite happy, you know, and uh, yeah, this is amazing win. This was very important for me because uh, it's here in our region, you know, and uh, I'm so happy. Henk Lattigan gets a second stage win of Dakar 2022, pushed to the finish by a charging Stefan Petterhansel, but it was really only Sebastian Loeb, fourth quickest, who was in contention to make a difference at the top. And the Frenchman did take another five minutes off Alatia, but still not enough to dent the Qatari's comfortable winning margin of nearly 28 minutes. The breakthrough performer in SSV, Rokas Bachuska, not letting his rookie status hold him back, 22-year-old Sites were on the podium. The Dakar-mad nation of Lithuania behind their youngest participant, Pachuska rocketing to victory in Jeddah. Two wins in three stages, takes Rokas third overall. Austin Jones came in search of the T4 title that slipped from his grasp 12 months ago. AJ promised to strip to the bare bones and send it as hard as he could in search of that elusive SSV gold. Without a stage win, but consistency over glory, till losing four-wheel drive yesterday, the American came home in third, but only one thing was certain, uncertainty. Did we win? 
No, how does no one know? No one's paying attention? <laughs> well, come on. Well, it was Jones and Gerard Fares, best of frenemies, as South Racing appeared to let the drivers race. The Spaniard started under two minutes ahead, but by the halfway stage, it was just 28 seconds. Then the Dakar Legends title was fried. An electrical problem handed the title to AJ, who took full advantage, turning a two-minute deficit into a two minutes and 37 second winning margin. Man, it means everything. I mean, this is what we've always wanted. This is what we've trained for for three years now, ever since I started this, and this is what we've always wanted. I mean, this is the goal of any rally raid racer is to win Dakar, so to get it done on a day like this, on the last day like this, I mean, it's a perfect ending to a really great story. We did it. We were competitive. As a team, we drove perfectly, impeccably. We're happy for our teammates who won. We are second, so we achieved our objective. I'll come back stronger than ever, thanks to this guy. Victory rocketed Bachuska to a second win, but also a top three finish overall to mark a stunning debut. Lupi second, with Jones third. Enough time game to turn last year's silver to gold. The Goxell brothers edged off the podium as South Racing celebrated a 1-2. What an amazing performance by the 25-year-old Austin Jones. He knew he had to go for it, and he outpaces Ferris by two and a half minutes. Jones is just the third American ever to win the Dakar in its 40-plus year history, joining Ricky Brayback and Casey Curry, who also won this class in 2020. to the final day in the lightweight prototype class. She came to win while Christina Gutierrez will have to settle for a spot on the third step of the podium. Best woman of the class, the emotional Spaniard manages her best ever Dakar. Well, the Red Bull off-road junior team had Gutierrez for the overall and Seth Quintero for the stages. And this Dakar will be one the young American will remember. To finish off the job, the 19-year-old conquered his 12th special. He's one of the revelations of this 2022 Dakar for his first appearance. Sebastian Eriksson impressed. The Swede finishes second and will be back for top spot. Uh, the feeling is good now. Uh, I mean, we, we just finished my first Dakar in, in second place. Uh, it's just amazing. Uh, we had a good two weeks, I would say, and, uh, and I think uh, I learned a lot. I improved. I, I felt that uh, I'm, I'm ready to, to take the next step now. Youth at power in the T3 class. But the master remains Chaleco Lopez in the lead. As of day two, he powered to victory. Experience being his major asset. After winning in T4 last year, he wins in the prototypes. We didn't have major problems and we didn't lose much time every day and we showed that we could win by being consistent. Last year was different because we were attacking all the time. Now we're cautious and it's very different. It's another way to race, but we enjoyed it just as much. Third Dakar success for the Chilean, two in T4 and now one in T3. This final stage is claimed by Quintero, who wins by just over a minute. Third, second spot for Ericsson. In the final overall, Lopez wins the Dakar with a comfortable lead of over 50 minutes. Three ladies in the top 10, Gutierrez, Liparotti and Saudi's Dania Akil. One final spin through the sand for the big beasts. It's been a Dakar of two halves for Ignacio Casale. Some big mechanical problems in week one, some big performances in week two. He came as high as third on this final stage and he's showing real promise for the future. A damaged exhaust pipe on stage four put Peter Martin Matchik's hopes of a podium. But like Casale, the Czech battled valiantly through the final days. Second today, he ended up in seventh place overall, and he also leads the World Rally Raid Championship. Considering all of the problems that they encountered in the build-up to this rally, the DeRoy team did a very solid job indeed. They put all four of their trucks inside the top ten. 
their highest finish. It was this man, Janis van Kasteren, in fifth place overall. That's his best result in four participations. Meanwhile, Vic Versteinen came eighth and Mitchell van den Brink was tenth. Mitchell's father, Martin van den Brink, looked in a tearing hurry to reach the finish line. Out of the way here, chaps. It was the first time he'd teamed up with Gerard de Roy and he took his best result sixth overall. But de Roy says his boys still have a lot of work to do if they want to catch the Kamaz. Because the Russian juggernauts proved more or less uncatchable at this 44th edition. Andrei Karganov recovered from gearbox problems to finish fourth and had three stage wins, while Anton Shibilov secured his third straight podium in third place. Meanwhile, two great champions, Eduard Nikolaev and Dmitry Sotnikov, went head to head in a thrilling battle for the overall crown. Between them, the two Russians wrapped up nine of the 13 stages, four for Nikolaev and five for Sotnikov. Well, Sotnikov was victorious again today and therefore made it back-to-back -back Dakar titles. The 36-year-old insisted that his fight with Nikolaev will only improve Kamaz as a team. That's a pretty scary thought for their rivals. I think uh, this race helped us to, to rise our level and, uh, and I think we'll be stronger next races. For the sixth year in a row and the 19th time in their history, Kamaz Master are the masters of Dakar. Sotnikov, Ruslan Akhmadeyev and Ilgiz Akhmetsyanov getting it done once again. I'm so very glad to, uh, to be here the second time and win. And uh, it was important for us. Uh, we have a new track and we worked hard uh, last year in the whole team. Well, with Kamaz, it is all about the team. And there were plenty of blue shirts waiting to celebrate at the finish line. Sotnikov rounding out Dakar 2022 in style. This was the only day with just a single Kamaz truck on the podium. He took his second title by 9 minutes and 58 seconds from Nikolaev, with Shibilov and Karganov over an hour back. It's the second Kamaz 1-2-3-4 after 2011. Seven quads on the road to Jeddah. Francisco Moreno ended his debut Dakar with a first stage win. It was Alexandre Giroud, a date with destiny. Raw emotions as he crossed the line as a quad champion. Well, from 100 kilometers, I was telling myself 50 left, 40 left, telling myself you could believe what's happening. 25 years ago. He made a stream, and unfortunately, he's not here today. Moreno's victory helped pip Kamel Wisniewski to second overall. Medeiros only missing the podium once in week two. But the new quad Dakar champion, Giroud's tears of joy and sorrow. The Americans' presence at the Dakar continues to grow. This year, Austin Jones won the ultimate prize and can now call himself a Dakar champion. Let's hear from him and his fellow Americans who completed the world's toughest rally raid. Man, it means everything. I mean, this is what we've always wanted. This is what we've trained for for three years now, ever since I started this, and this is what we've always wanted. I mean, this is the goal of any rally raid racer is to win Dakar. So to get it done on a day like this, on the last day like this, I mean, it's a perfect ending to a really great story. What a way, what a dramatic way to finish it. Uh, I mean, it was a rough start for sure. We started in some dust and got lost for about five minutes. And uh, I told myself we're not going to let the rally end this way. We've come too far to have a bad result at the end. And uh, I drove as hard as I could those last 100Ks. And we're here with about a minute and a half lead. And my mind is blown. Uh, the O3 worked absolutely amazing. I want to give a big thank you to BFG Tires because I drove way too hard for how small these tires are. And we had no issues the whole rally. So mind blown. And uh, yeah, I'm obviously bummed out still just because we're not in the overall, but we won almost every single stage. But I'm happy for the whole team. OT3 won every single stage of Dakar this year. And uh, yeah, we'll be back next year better than ever and uh, we'll do it again. Uh, this is my seventh Dakar. Uh, I hope to, to keep going. Um, obviously, I'm going to learn from my mistakes that I made the last two years. All in all, it was fun. The country's great. Uh, I'm, already, I'm already thinking of next year. So 
um, I have a lot to work on and um, yeah, I think we're gonna come back strong. Didn't have a good feeling. My bike is on the limit and I'm happy to make it to the finish and uh, be here safe. That was the main goal was to get to the finish and I'm happy I've done that. This was my fifth Dakar and you know, maybe it's my last, I don't know. And uh, I've really enjoyed it. I love rally, I love the paddock, I love the people and the passion. And uh, it's an amazing race. It's a special race here at Dakar. Today was a really nice day, nice stage, good navigation, really fast. Uh, I had a lot of fun today. I feel like this is the stage today really suited my riding style. I'm sure wherever I'm at right now, uh, it's way above whatever I expected. I had a really good time out here at the car and uh, I just hope I get to come back next year. The third year of the Dakar Rally in Saudi Arabia didn't disappoint. From incredible scenery to the heroic efforts by all the competitors, congratulations to American Austin Jones and all the champions. To me, this race symbolizes the start to motorsports worldwide each year, and it always leaves me wanting more time in the dunes. For more racing action this year, head on over to the Motorsports on NBC YouTube page. I'm Parker Kligerman. Thanks for joining us on another epic Dakar Rally.